played in a band. We used to go to folk, folk night, so it was all sorts. My parents had a old fashioned boombox gramophone and he used to listen to the he liked Frank Sinatra and Glenn Miller. That sort of thing. So there was always even for me there was always a lot of music around, but I was never particularly talented <laughs> at music. So I just used to enjoy other people playing in those days. So, folk nights weren't they were just that. Mm -hmm. They weren't there was no amplification, no speakers or anything like that and a lot very traditional, a lot of sing along mm -hmm. type a lot of music. Rover. A lot of Wild Rover and a lot of, a lot of beer. Yeah, yes. absolutely. I used to go to them as well. Yeah, and yeah, at, at school, you'd swap your albums with your mates and you'd spend £1.99 or £2.49 or something like that on an album. Right. And everybody would swap it and you'd tape it. As a 13-year-old, I have to confess that my guilty pleasure was status quo. That's not that good <laughs> guilty pleasure. They were a massive band then. They? <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> They were. No, I used to love them. And, and I used to also love Lindisfarne. Mm. I, I absolutely love Lindisfarne. Genesis, um, Irish band called Horse Lips. I liked a lot. And then came the punk and the new wave revolution and I liked all of that stuff. How old was you about then when all the punk and new wave hit? Um, I was uh, when punk, when the, when Johnny Rotten misbehaved on the Bill Grundy show, I think I was about 17 or 18. About well, hard rock as well. I was a regular at the Reading Festival when it was quite small, you know, so from about 75, 76 onwards. I saw people like Dr. Feelgood and Black Oak, Arkansas and Status Quo and all those bands. Wishbone Ash, I was a great Wishbone Ash fan. Yeah. fan. Yeah, I lived abroad for many years, so we used to. And where was that? Andy? In Southeast Asia, Asia, right. Thailand, Singapore. So we used to. What took you over there? Because that's quite. Oh, a just work, thing. Just, just work. work. That's where my kids were born. Right. Yeah, work. I worked for an engineering company, and we used to supply a lot of kit to the food industry, basically. Right. So. So there's not so much prominent original music over there, but my wife played bass in a band. Right. You see, just just a covers band, an entertainment band in the pubs and hotels, but that was. Um, Maybe where, Ning, uh, where Christina got her inspiration from. As a teenager, she she gravitated towards the nightclubs, and there's one in Worcester called Sin, and they had a competition called Worcester's Got Talent. I'm not quite sure. The first time she entered, she entered with a, a friend of hers called Clementina. They're both of their names end up with Tina. So. They went out as a duo in that competition called Just Tina, and, th and they just sang backing tracks. But they basically ran out of songs that they both knew. <laughs> they got quite far into the competition, then went out. She was about 18 then, but basically they didn't have, they weren't practiced, and they didn't have songs. But that wet wet her appetite. And then her and her friends would go to Malia or somewhere like that for the summer and work in the bars, and she would sing on the beach and get a crowd around have a great time, meet lots of people in 2009. One of her friends entered her for that competition again, so she hadn't done it for a couple of years and hadn't really been interested. And, and uh, they did really well. No, she entered it on her own. She did really well. She got, got into the final where she came second or third, something like that. Gaithan won. Gaithan, who's been on X Factor. <laughs> you know Gaithan? No, I don't. Oh, you, yeah. you'll, you'll meet him at the Firefly one night. He's a lovely chap. <coughs> her A-levels would have pointed her in towards kind of university business management or accountancy, business studies, something like that. And about four years ago, around about the time of that competition, I was chatting with her and I said to her, look, you really don't fancy going to university to study one of those subjects just yet, do you? And she agreed and I said, well, look, music's what you really like to do. You've, it's what you're really occupied with. You, you've, you do have to have some sort of academic rigour and discipline, but you do have that. You've proven to yourself that you can study for your A-levels and that sort of thing. So I would say that one of the most important things, besides having the academic background, is to have a field of activity which you're in love with, and then you can be your hobby, and it, for lots of people, becomes their career as well. So give it a go in music. So that's what she decided to do. She decided to... Um, see what she could achieve in music without any big shape to it or anything like that. Noel Lewis, Noel Lewis who organises Bridge Bash, or one of the guys, partners in Bridge Bash, saw her 
playing the piano and singing. It might have been the gig that you came to, or one of those gigs around about the time when you, when you and Becky came. Right. Uh, and Kath. Um, and he said to her afterwards, if you can get a band together, I'll put you on the main stage at Bridge Bash. Right. So, uh, she, were, she had got to know Hayden at the time. And, they, and Hayden was in a band called Ancient Addicts, which we hadn't gigged yet. That was a project with Cy Anthony and Jim Allen. So, so they were talking and they said, well, we'll be your band. So that's how This Week of Tongue happened. They got the gig first, then they got the band, <laughs> then they got a name. Right. And Cy was going through his iPod and going through song names and This Week of Tongue came up. Christine says, yeah, that's the one. So, so then the band had a name and and they focused in on uh, on the gig with Bridge Bash and music. So early gigs then, what, what was that meaning to you? Were you driving and yeah, keyboards and mo things up? Or? Mostly it was open mics. Um, open mics, the odd paid gig, very rare that there's a paid gig, especially for somebody relatively inexperienced. And it was still a question. We bought a second-hand PA, it wasn't a very good one, about £90 on eBay, something like that. Um, drove up to your old town, Derby, yeah. somewhere like that, to get it. Um, and even then, neither one of us knew how to get good sound out of a PA, so she might turn in a good performance in a pub, but the PA wasn't particularly good, and regulars could tell that the sound wasn't great, but I didn't know. Well, a little bit of reverb, I didn't know that that might help the sound. So it was all a big learning curve. But yes, I would be driving her around. I'd get quite a few gigs, but as much as anything else, it was open mics. I don't think I really thought it was going to be a money spinner right from the start. And you don't need to speak to too many people to realise um, that it's not the money's not going to start pouring in. So from the start, I think she and I had our eyes open. And it was an experiment as much as anything else that was going well. And then, of course, um, the band became the focus anyway, because she'd started off not thinking about having a band. She'd never thought to herself, yeah, I'd like to be in a rock band. She wasn't into that kind of music. She was into Beyonce and, and modern R&B, dance music, that sort of thing. She all, had All my hope is, and it's still my hope, is that she just gets identified she just reaches a point where she can make the living for the rest of her adult life in an area where she is comfortable. Mm. Because I think that to a great extent what she needs to do in order to achieve that at this moment in her on that trajectory is exactly the same as what she would need to do if her target was to become rich and famous in any case. I don't think there's any difference. So there's no need to, to focus on one or the other. What would you say to parents that are start, just starting out on this journey with their kids, thinking that they might be stars? What, what would you say to them? Are, are they being realistic, do you think? Or? I would say if, they're, if they think they're going to be stars, then they're not being realistic. Mm. Um, any more than, say, the parents of a boy that's incredibly talented at football are being realistic that they think he's going to play for Manchester United or one of the big clubs because you only have to do the numbers you only have to look around um, the open mics and the the venues in a small county such as Worcestershire go a bit further afield into to Birmingham and so forth to see the vast numbers of people that are playing the guitar singing writing their own songs and then compare it with the number of people that get published and come to prominence you divide one into the other and that's your chance of success and I, I say to the band, I, I do think that band is very, very good, but I'm bound to, aren't I? But I say to them, I could find 200 bands like yours on the internet by tomorrow morning. And if I was a record executive, I could stack them up in order. I could, I could evaluate them and say, well, this is the best, this is the second best, and this is the 200th best. And even if you were the best, right, and I was a record executive, I, as a record executive, could pick the 200th best and in three years' time by giving them TLC and attention, providing they have got the work ethic, and that's mm. all important. They'll be more successful than you, mm. who's at the top of the list. <laughs> so, what keeps you going in those early stages where you? It's fun. Yeah. It's enjoyable. It's not costing you. It's not being done to the detriment to the detriment of something else. And 
we're only say, we're only saying there that the prospects of making it big in the mu music industry are very slim. But that earlier point that it is an industry, and that um, you can be employed and live and work in the music industry without necessarily earning a fortune, but still be comfortable, is still valid. So 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 that's that's your base camp, if you like. That's your your default position. If you reach that stage, then you've succeeded. There, there is a significant cost in that involved. For me, I kind of look at it as partly as my social life, and the gigs she does are not huge distances and and we do try and get expenses so often you can get 20 or 30 pounds from a venue which pays for your petrol to get there and they'll give you a couple of drinks and maybe even a meal if they do meals uh the biggest cost is your petrol and your time i'd say you need to put some money into the equipment yeah wear and tear on the car wear and tear on you you know it's it's, it's a lot of late nights a lot of late nights. And if you're in business, that's something you have to... Your time, yes, that's why I say the, the petrol and the time. Yeah, the mileage, call it the mileage, you know, because your petrol probably works out as 25 pence a mile, but the impact on your car probably makes it closer to 40 pence a mile. So you should be thinking in terms of, you know, if I go to, if I travel 200 miles, well, that's cost me perhaps 50 pounds in petrol, but really it's cost me 80 pounds because of the wear and tear on the car. But it's the time involved. You get back home at two o'clock in the morning. You've got work to go to the next day, or even um, you've got to be reasonably commercial about it, and you've got to have a plan as well. Um, so, so back in the early days, we used to sit down once in a while. We just made, used to make a list of things that she needed to try and accomplish. It could be putting a certain number of videos up on YouTube by a certain amount of by a certain date. It could be getting a certain number of gigs and earning a certain number of money certain amount of money so you do have to write things down and, and then revisit them and see where you're where you're how you're performing in comparison with your the plan that you had in the first place that gives you some structure 